Gregor Mendel conducted experiments to answer one of the fundamental questions of heredity. What are the basic patterns in the transmission of traits from parents to offspring? In this recreation of Mendel's historic experiments, you will have the opportunity to predict the outcome of two types of genetic crosses using a Punnett square. In this first example, the plants being mated differ in just one trait. One plant is homozygous for the dominant purple flower allele of a gene. The other is homozygous for a recessive white flower allele. To show the mating, we arrange the parent plants along two sides of the square. Note that each parent produces a single type of gamete. The genotype of each gamete produced by one parent, shown on the top, is brought down into each of the squares below it. Likewise, the genotype of each gamete produced by the other parent, shown on the left, is moved into each square to the right. The Punnett square helps us predict the genotypes of the offspring. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the offspring. Drag the correct phenotypes to each square in the grid. Notice that all of these offspring have the same flower phenotype as the purple flowered plants in the parental generation. In the offspring, called the F1 generation, the white phenotype disappears. If we mate these heterozygous plants to each other or allow them to self-pollinate, what kinds of offspring would you expect? From the choices given, select the correct gametes to place on the two sides of the Punnett square. Using the information provided, predict the genotypes of the offspring. Drag the correct genotypes to each square in the grid. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the offspring. Drag the correct phenotypes to each square in the grid. This first series of crosses recaps the result of a mating in which the parent plants differ in a single trait. The parent plants are homozygous for the dominant and recessive alleles. Their F1 offspring are heterozygous and show the dominant purple flower phenotype. The next generation, called the F2 generation, reveals a typical 3 to 1 ratio of phenotypes. The recessive white-flowered phenotype reappears in this generation after having disappeared in the F1 generation. The two series of crosses shown here illustrate a mating of peas in which the parent plants differ in two traits. These traits are round versus wrinkled texture and yellow versus green color. Each cross yields a 3 to 1 ratio of phenotypes in the F2 generation. If the two heterozygous F1 plants were crossed, what genotypes and phenotypes would result? These homozygous parent plants differ in both the R and the Y genes. The round yellow pea has dominant R alleles for a round phenotype and dominant Y alleles for a yellow phenotype. The wrinkled green pea has recessive R alleles for a wrinkled phenotype and recessive Y alleles for a green phenotype. From the choices given, select the correct gametes to place on the two sides of the Punnett square. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the offspring in each square of the grid. Drag your selections from the phenotype choices. In our cross, notice that all of the F1 individuals show the dominant yellow and round phenotypes. The recessive alleles in this generation are present, but the dominant alleles mask the recessive phenotype. 
If we mate F1 individuals to each other or allow them to self-pollinate, what kinds of offspring would you expect? Begin by dragging the correct gametes to the two sides of the Punnett square. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the F2 offspring. Drag your selections from the phenotype choices. When the genes for two traits are considered, the F2 plants have phenotypes in a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. 9 are round and yellow, 3 are round and green, 3 are wrinkled and yellow, 1 is wrinkled and green. This phenotype ratio of the F2 generation is typical of a cross in which the parental generation differs in two traits that are sort independently of each other. According to Mendel's principle of independent assortment, the genes behave independently of each other during meiosis, resulting in this predictable ratio of phenotypes in the offspring. Although our cross involved a difference in two traits, we can examine each trait individually to see the typical three-to-one ratios of single trait crosses. There are 12 round peas and 4 wrinkled peas, or a ratio of 3 round peas for every wrinkled pea. There are also 12 yellow peas and 4 green peas, or a ratio of 3 yellow peas for every green pea. In the group of yellow peas, there are 12 round peas and 3 wrinkled peas, making a ratio of 3 round peas for every wrinkled pea. And in the group of green peas, there are three round peas and one wrinkled pea, again, making a ratio of three round peas for every wrinkled pea. Regardless of the color phenotype, the texture ratios will always be three to one. Similarly, regardless of the texture genotype, the color ratios will always be three to one. These results are typical for traits that assort independently.